Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Yogesh and today we are back with another webinar to celebrate the winter solstice. First of all, a very happy winter solstice to everyone. And all of you, let me know am I audible and visible to all of you. Please let me know in the chat box. Please let me know am I audible or visible? Is my audio and video clear? Great. So, welcome everyone to this celebration of winter solstice by performing an experiment that is known as Project Paridi. So, let me first tell you that what exactly is this Project Paridi and what we are going to do today. And let me tell you, this is going to be a, a little long session and you can do the experiment alongside us. You will require certain materials, we will let you know in between the session what all things are required. And you can bring them from your house and do the experiment with us. Now as we are saying that it is winter solstice, it has word soul hidden in it. And soul is related to the term sun. Soul is another name of sun. That's a Roman name of sun. So that means it has some relation with the sun. So we'll be needing the sunlight. So if you're watching me on your computers or on your laptops, it would be good if you start watching me on a mobile phone, right? So that when we move out to the experiment, we can do the experiment or you can do the experiment alongside. But before the experiment, let us understand the science behind this experiment and let us understand about this winter solstice. What exactly is it and what experiment we are going to perform. So, let me share my presentation with you all. Now, I hope you all are able to see my presentation on the screen that says Project Paridi. Now, Project Paridi is a flagship project of Space India where we measure the circumference of the earth by doing a very simple hands-on experiment and using simple backyard tools. It can even be your pencil or pen that you use in uh, your daily life or it can be any vertical stick. So, we are going to replicate the Eratosthenes activity or the Eratosthenes experiment which we performed 2300 years ago. And told the world about the circumference of the earth. Just imagine, nowadays we have satellite, nowadays we have a lot many methods to find out the circumference, but at that time, he did all the things manually, even he checked up the distance by sending the animals to that particular distance. Can you imagine that thing? So, let us understand, let's listen to his uh, story and let's understand the whole concept behind this and let's understand about the winter solstice as well. Now, what is going to be our today's objective? The objective of our today's session or today's webinar is to measure the circumference of Earth. And how we are going to measure the circumference of Earth? We are going to measure the circumference of Earth by doing a hands-on science experiment using simple backyard tools. That is going to be a simple normal stick, white paper, scale and things like that. When this experiment should be performed. Now, today I told you that there is a special day that is uh, the winter solstice. But if I ask you, is there any specific date on which this experiment should be performed? So, if I talk about any particular day or date, this experiment can be performed on any day. But the benefit that we get of performing this experiment on particular days is we know the exact position of sun. You might be thinking, sir, sun is every day in the sky. How do you know the exact position? So, here when I say exact position, I mean by the coordinates. I mean by its position or I can say that where exactly a shadow is going to fall on earth. So 
that's why I have taken today's date. And today is a special day when sun is going to cross a particular latitude. So easy for me to perform the calculations. Now, let us understand this thing in detail. Now, I have two pictures. Picture A and picture B. Tell me which is the correct representation of the earth with its axis. Which is the correct representation? Picture A or picture B? Let me know in the chat box. In the comment box. Okay, those who are saying that you do not have anything, don't worry, you can even do the experiment with a pen or pencil if you have at your house. Yes, a pen or pencil, that's all you need. B, exactly. So, B is the correct representation, that means Earth's axis is not straight, it is tilted. And how much it is tilted? It is tilted by 23 and a half degrees. Now, this tilt is one of the reasons to the tilt is one of the reasons for the seasons on the earth right now moving a little forward let us talk about the earth now what happened i tried to find the place new delhi on the google map i got six results i was surprised why there are six results for new delhi and i forgot that i mentioned i forgot to mention india after new delhi that means there are seven New Delhi in the whole world. There's another example, Mohali. I search for Mohali. There are two Mohali, which are very near. Right. So that's why to get the unique address of any place, what we did, we made some lines on the earth. That means we made the grid system on the earth. Now if I talk about a grid, a grid should have the vertical lines and the horizontal lines. So in that horizontal lines, they are the lines of latitude, right? And the biggest latitude that we have is the equator, which is dividing the Earth into two halves. One, the half above the equator is northern half, or below the equator is the southern half. That's the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere. Then, the Earth has two poles from where the axis is coming out of the Earth. So, from the pole, uh, north pole to south pole, we join the lines. Right, and these lines we call them as longitudes. And if I combine both of them, lines of latitude and lines of longitude, I get a picture something like this. That means the grids on the earth. Now, if I talk about the grid, there are some important positions, some uh, special latitudes on the earth. First one being the equator. That cuts the earth from the center, divides into two half northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. Then comes longitudes. In the longitude, there is one particular longitude that is time meridian. Reference for the longitudes, that is zero degree longitude. Both latitude and longitude, they are measured in degrees. If I talk about equator, it is zero degree latitude. And as you move upward towards the pole, you will get... Uh, or the latitude will increase in this way, like 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, like that. And once you reach the pole, that is exactly going to be your 90 degree latitude. Right? Now, you might think, sir, if we are going up to 90, what if we increase the angle a little more? So, is that going to be 100? The answer is no. That is not going to be 100. Let's say you go up to 90 and after 90, you move further. Then, you will reach again 80 degree latitude because earth is a whole complete sphere and when i talk about the latitude they are, they are not just the lines they are the concentric circles okay they are the concentric circles with the equator and which ends up at the pole right now in the northern hemisphere we have two important latitudes one is topic of cancer which is at 23 um, degrees at 23.5 degrees north or 23 degrees 26 minutes north. We have another important latitude in northern hemisphere that is 66 degrees and 34 minutes north. Now, what is the importance of this? They hold a, a, a very important place in astronomy, and I'll let you know what exactly is the importance. Before that, in the southern hemisphere, also we have similarly we have two important latitudes. One is Tropic of Capricorn, right, and next one is uh, Antarctic circle 
So topic of Capricorn, it's it's again on 23 degrees and 26 minutes, but this time in South Southern Hemisphere, and in tactic circle is at 66 degree and 34 minutes South. Okay, now does these numbers have any relation with tilt of Earth? Yes. See the topic of Cancer, it is 23 and a half degree. Okay, and the tilt of Axis is 23 and a half. See 66.5. So how it is related to tilt of Earth? North Pole's latitude is 90. Subtract 23.5 from it and you will get 66.5. Now, the relation is very simple. Let me tell you the importance of these two latitudes. So if I talk about the Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circle, right? Or if you might have heard that on North Pole, we have six months of daytime and six months of night. But if you are living in any region, any region between the Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circle, Every day, that means in 24 hours, sunrise and sunset will definitely happen. There will be no single day without the night day. Right? And above that, we have, like if we move on, the number of days for which the sun is there in the sky or is not there in the sky will increase. Okay? Now, moving ahead. Let us understand this thing through a simple animation, right? We know that the earth it is going around the sun and it is tilted. So how it is going around the sun? See, the tilt is always on the one side. The tilt is always on the one side. And earth takes 365 days to complete this one orbit, right? Now, as the earth takes 365 days to complete its one orbit, if you again look carefully in this, See here, you will find that the sunlight is falling on some part of the globe. Not, uh, it is not lighting up the complete globe. See, now assume sun as a huge torch. Okay, and Earth being a small sphere. So if Earth is a sphere and sun is lit up at, uh, at such a huge distance, what will happen? Half of the sphere of uh, Earth, it will get the light. And as it will get the light, the remaining half will be in the dark. Now, if the Earth's axis is not straight, it is tilted. So what is going to happen is the Earth is at this position. You can see that from the North Pole and the region beyond the North Pole, they are receiving the light. But at the South Pole, they are not receiving the light. Now, when the Earth comes onto this position, over here. Right. Now, what is happening? North Pole is not receiving the light, but the South Pole is receiving the light. Now, if I just stop it in between this, like over here, can you see that both North and South Pole are receiving the light? So, that means the sun is traveling like this. And what are the two places in between the sun travels? There is a limit to it. The limit is very simple, Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle. If I just clarify this with a simple picture, <laughs> see over here in this graphic. Okay, you all can see that it is 365 rotation that is equal into one year, right? Now, if I put up the Earth at four major position, right? So, in case of uh, summer solstice or in case of when the northern side is tilted towards the sun sun will be directly overhead to the arctic uh, topic of cancer and the sunlight will go up to arctic circle it will cover much beyond the north pole right and can you see the shaded region the shaded region actually marks up to which the sunlight will go right let's say on the other side means this is the case that happens in June, June 21. And after six months, sun comes in the, in the December month, sun, uh, Earth comes at this position in its orbit. And you can see that now the North Pole is in the dark, but the light is reaching almost up to South Pole. Now what about the cases in the middle? So in between the June and December, we have equinox that comes in September, that means equal day and equal night. Right. So, what is happening here? Sun it is lighting up both the hemispheres, northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. 
both of them right now moving ahead after this so if i move forward let us understand one more thing here concept of local loon i said that sun will be going overhead to the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn at what time so that time is local loon and local loon what exactly is local loon so local loon is if you are standing anywhere in the ground you go out in a ground and you stand anywhere in the ground so you know that sun will rise from the east and it will set in the west right and if i connect the north and south direction just make an imaginary line right the going above your head exactly above your head okay so let's say sun is rising from here and you can see the north and south line okay i stop it here can you see it is crossing in this north and south line now this is the moment of local loon now what does this mean this means this local loon means that at this time sun would be at the maximum altitude for you and if the sun Hello. and if the sun is exactly overhead to you then it is going to um, uh, make zero shadow for you but if the sun is not exactly overhead it will cause the smallest shadow for you right now let's say i am i am living in delhi okay the latitude of delhi is 28.5 now i told you that sun can only go overhead between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn so tropic of cancer is on 23 and a half degree north tropic of capricorn is on 23 and a half degree south now latitude of delhi is 28.5 degrees north that means it is above the tropic of cancer okay now if it is above the tropic of cancer that means sun can never come overhead in delhi right at the time of local noon even though the year if it, even if the sun travels between the tropics it is never going to come exactly overhead now if it is not going to come exactly overhead we are not going to get the zero shadow but is there any day when i get the smallest shadow yes i do have a day and every day there will, at the time of local noon when the sun will be crossing this north and south line i will have my shortest shadow so today we have to uh, take uh, take the help of that shortest shadow in finding the circumference of the earth how we have to do that so let us understand the whole procedure now let's say this is the earth and over here let's say on the day of equinox sun is overhead at the equator okay now if the sun is overhead at equator then the person who is uh, living on the equator will cast no shadow at the time of local loon but the person at tropic of capricorn and tropic of cancer will have their own shadows right same goes for summer solstice the sun is overhead to tropic of cancer the person at tropic of cancer will have no shadow at the time of local loon but the person at equator or tropic of capricorn will have shadow you might ask sir it is dependent on lang uh, latitude does it also works on uh, longitude c earth is rotating so that means throughout the 24 hours every longitude will receive some part of sunlight so that's why it is majorly dependent on latitude now today is the case of winter solstice so anyone who will be there on the topic of capricorn will get to see zero shadow at the time of local noon and same thing happens in hawaii Day, if you go to Hawaii, there is a, a concept, or you can say there is a celebration known as, uh, oh, it's something related to the noon where all the shadows disappear, right? Now, moving ahead, let's talk about the Eratosthenes, the person who conducted this experiment for the first time. See, I'm talking about the time 276 BC and 194 BC when the uh, science was getting transformed, or you can say astronomy was getting transformed. People. Uh, at that time, very few people know that the Earth was round. Uh, people like Plato they tried to tell the world, but many of them didn't believe. They thought that the Earth is flat. But does Earth is like this? Answer is being no. Earth is not flat. It is round. But all the people at that time they don't used to believe. But people like Eratosthenes, they tried to find out the answer to this: whether the Earth is flat or it is curved. Now, what happened? Uh, something happened to Eratosthenes. What was that incident? I'll take you to that story. He used to live with live at a place called Syene, right? Sorry, he used to live in Alexandria, Egypt. 
and he was a great mathematician and a librarian there too. So he read in a journal over there that there's a place called Sine. In current time, it is known as Aswan. Right? There's a place called Sine at that place on one particular day. What happens is all the shadows of the things they disappear. Right? Now this is something very interesting, and this was something very strange for Eratosthenes to believe. Why? Because he knew that if this thing is happening in sign, there must be somebody here in Alexandria too. He tried to observe but didn't got anything. So he concluded that the Earth's shape is not straight. It's not flat because if sun is so huge, if it, if it is casting zero shadow at one place, then other place should also have zero shadow. So if the other place is not having zero shadow, that means there is some... Um, and there's something doubtful about the shape of earth. It cannot be flat. It is curved. He assumed it to be sphere. Okay, he assumed that it is sphere. And now let us calculate its circumference. Now one way can be we take a measuring tape and go around the whole earth. That is not feasible. So he used the geometry, the mathematical portion. He used the maths and did that. Okay, so this is the story at side in Egypt. On any day, like if the sun used to rise up, People used to get their shadows. But on a fixed day, that is the day of summer solstice, no shadow was there and people were able to see the image of uh, the sun in a, uh, in a well. Now, in Alexandria, Egypt, on the day of summer solstice, there were shadows. So he used the geometry, he plotted the two things onto a circle, that means onto a place. And later on, when he studied this, he uh, found out that if there is sight, if there is Alexandria, let's say these are the two places on the earth. And if the earth is not straight, and the sun rays are falling somewhat like this. Right? That means in sign, they are falling exactly upright. And in Alexandria, they are forming some angle. Now. Okay. Now, they are forming some angle. So, we join the line from the Alexandria to Sine to the center of Earth. He got an angle as 7 degrees. Okay, he got an angle as 7 degrees by geometry. Now, what was the geometry? Let us understand that. On the day of equinox, uh, let's say if there is any place on the equator, there is no shadow. But, let's say if I talk about any place which is at some distance D. For example, Sine was at a particular latitude that was zero shadow day on summer solstice that means it was on topic of cancer right now if there's any place with zero shadow at some distance d it will form some shadow now if a shadow is getting formed it must be formed because of sunlight and here if i talk about this uh, angle which is made by shadow with the building if i take that angle as s that is um, i call it as sun angle because it is getting formed by sun right and if I use the property of the alternate interior angle, I can figure out that this angle is equivalent to the angle which is formed by the two lines joining the center of Earth. Here, so that's why we said that sun angle, which is formed by the sun rays with a particular building at distance d, is equal to the angle subtended by the two locations in the center of Earth. We further use this, okay, to find out the circumference of Earth. How? Let's just do a, a small exercise here. Okay, so let's say we have a, this pizza over here and we have to divide the pizza among four people equally. Right? So I know one thing that the complete, if I take the complete pizza angle, okay, it makes a 360 degree. Every sphere uh, or every uh, circle makes a 360 degree of angle. Right? So how we have to uh, like make this complete angle? Okay, how, uh, how much one person will get? I just need to divide it by 4. 360 divided by 4 it will be 90 degrees. It is going to be my answer. Right? So each person is going to get the 90 degrees of pizza. And I am just going to rearrange. See, this is a mathematical equation. I am just going to rearrange some terms. And I just uh, reverse this. Can I say 90 divided by 360 is equal to 1 by 4? This is one part. Okay. The problem statement was I need to divide the pizza amongst the four people equally. Right? One person, how much one person is going to get? I need this need to divide it by four. I said 90 degree of pizza will be given to one person. 
Okay. Now. Okay. Now. Let's say. Again, the problem statement is same. And uh, now I am just uh, changing the scenario. Instead of giving you the angle, I tell you that the circumference of the whole prism is 400 cm. Divide it into four equal parts. So what we are going to do, we will measure the 100 cm. Okay, we will measure the 100 cm and give it to one person. That means you divide 400 by 4. So each person is going to get the 100 cm of prism. And if I just rearrange the terms, can I get this number? 100 by 400 is equal to 1 by 4. Okay, then both the terms, both the answers, first one and the second case, if I just compare both of them, and I say that if I just divide 360 by 90, I'm getting 4. If I divide 400 by 100, I'm getting 4. And I say ratio of the angle subtended to the full circle means 1 by 4 of this pizza when I'm dividing it by angle, and 1 by 4 of the pizza when I'm dividing it by distance, uh, that is circumference, both are equal. Right? Both are equal. Ratio of the angle subtended to the full circle is equal to ratio of arc subtended to the semi uh, circumference. Same thing we have to use in case of Earth. See, this is the diagram over here. There are two places which are at distance D and they make an angle S to the center of the Earth. So, what I need to do is the ratio of the sun angle. Okay, with 360 degrees exactly going to be equal to the arc length and the circumference of earth right and from a electricity experiment we have to find out these two things one is sun angle and second is arc length d so arc length d how you are going to find out how electricity is found out so electricity is he sent some camels some people uh, on the uh, with the camels right measure the distance between the sine and Alexandria and that's how he figured out that distance second thing find out the sun angle he did the experiment now nowadays if I go to a place with uh, like uh, where the sun will be overhead so that is going to be a huge task right now so what we need to do in case of project or in case of the experiment so for this okay so for this now someone has asked me sir what is rearranging the terms ig Troy rearranging the terms means i have just reversed the ratio it means it was 400 by 4 i just reversed it 100 by 400 it is going to be 1 by 4 and uh, over here see if you want to do this eratosthenes experiment the material that we need is written over here that means you need a numon rod numon base protector pencil wooden board some line split level calculator, A4 sheet, eraser, magnetic compass. You might find some of the material in your house or uh, you might not find all of them. Right. So is there any alternative? Answer is yes, there is an alternative. So let me uh, tell you about the alternative. Give me a second.
Okay. So, if I see here, in case you want to do the experiment with us, you will need these materials, right? So, the most common material in this that you will require is the pencil or any vertical stick. Okay, second thing that you need is a protector, third thing that you need is a ruler, and fourth thing that you need is a, a small net or any heavy object, a string, okay, some uh, thumbtacks or you can say thumb pins, A4 sheet, spirit level, if you do not have a spirit level at your end, you can install an application called bubble level on your phone, a wooden board, or you can also do the experiment on the ground, okay, then you need some dough or clay, okay, it can be any dough, right, then you need the eraser. Now, we'll be also moving out for the experiment because, see, we, uh, the important part of this experiment is, um, we have to take the reading at the time of local noon. So, I'll take you on to my setup where exactly I have done the setup for doing this experiment and we'll do this experiment live so that you can do it with us, right. Meanwhile, when I'm taking you, uh, I'll leave this screen over here, okay, and so that you can arrange the material as per the screen, uh, as, per show, uh, as per the material shown on the screen, right, and I'll join back after five minutes and I'll tell you that how the experiment has to be done, right. One of my team member is ready with the experiment, he'll brief you more about the things. Meanwhile, you have five minutes, you all can arrange the things that you're in. At minimum, bare minimum thing that you need for now is an A4 sheet, a horizontal ground, okay, a pencil or any vertical stick, okay, eraser, ruler, that's all. And for the thumb, uh, for the A4 sheet, if you cannot, uh, if you do not have thumb pins to hold it on the wooden board, what is the next thing that you need to do is find out something heavy which uh, can hold the paper onto a particular case, right? So. I'll take a break here for five minutes. You all arrange the material and I'll uh, show you the setup that how exactly the experiment has to be done.
पहले वेलकम करते हैं Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Apoor live from Space India's Delhi office, and today I've got all the materials set up for Project Paridi, or measuring the Earth experiment or the Ratosthenes experiment, the same one that was done 2,300 years ago. I've got the materials right in front of me. So I hope you have arranged most of the stuff that you were supposed to. Let me just go through what I've got over here so that you have some idea of what I am going to do do now. Okay. so over here the first thing that i have got is this thing now i asked you for a vertical stick or a pencil in place of this but i've got a particular thing it's called a nomon it's just a simple metal stick okay other than that i've got a nomon base this is what will be used to mount the nomon okay this is the thing that will be used to mount the nomon right here um in case you don't have access to one of these then you may use clay or you may use um atta dough in place of this to keep your nomon stable other than that i've got this hex nut over here uh, that i'll use to create something called a plumb line now um instead of the hex nut you are allowed to use anything that small and quite heavy so it's up to you whatever is available to you you can use that so next up i've got some string again this string will be used for the plumb line i'll i'll use a small portion of it break it off tie it up with whatever small object i've got to create the plumb line right next up i've just got a pencil and an eraser this will be used to note down the stuff that i've got uh, to note down while i'm doing the experiment next up i've got a ruler over here i've got a ruler i'll ne i'll need it to draw some lines later on next i've got something called a spirit level i hope you can see this clearly there is a bubble in here there is a bubble in here so that's the spirit level it tells us whether something is flat or not if i move it around you can hopefully you can see the bubble moving in there uh this is used to tell if something is flat or not in case you don't have access to a spirit level in that case you can use something known as the bubble level app which is the same thing but inside your phone okay so it works in a different with a different technology but um right you can just use it to tell whether something is level or not whether something is flat or not okay other than that i've got some thumb tacks over here simple thumb tacks like this i'll need just a few not a lot of these so i'll need four or five of these at most other than that i've got a board a wooden board over here and on top of that i've got the sheet i'll explain what the use of all these things is later on but for now i want you to know what these things are so it's just a simple plain a4 sheet nothing other than that nothing special about it um i've got these thumb tacks that are keeping this sheet in place because i don't want it to fly off while i'm explaining stuff okay so uh i hope you already have your materials in place because now we are going to get started with the experiment first up i'm going to make sure that my sheet stays in place so let's say this is your sheet it's free it's independent it has got a lot of freedom it can move around anywhere it wants so what do we do with it since for the course of our experiment we want it to stay in place i want you to make sure that um it is staying in place so for my case since i've got a wooden board and i've got these thumb tacks i'm going to use this i'm going to use this uh but in case you are not using a wooden board and you've just got a sheet of paper you can just place four heavy objects around it i'll explain how so for three corners you will place heavy objects like this and you'll make sure that your uh that your sheet will not fly off while we are doing this right like this so this is how you're supposed to do it so that three corners of your sheet are in place they are not moving around while we are doing our experiment next up i'm going to place my nomon base over here now in case you don't have your nomon base in case you don't have your nomon base take some clay take some um atta in place of it and place it on one corner it will not only will it stabilize your sheet but it will also give you a place to in the end uh, mount your nomon so i'm using this nomon base because i've got access to one i'm going to place it like this 
and then I'm going to stabilize it using two of these pins. So pin number one goes like this, pin number two goes like this, and we have got it stabilized. Um, next up, I'm going to mount my gnomon rod. So this is my gnomon rod. I'm going to mount it using my using my gnomon base, and I placed it over here. And uh, while I'm doing this, I'll turn around my I'll turn around my whole setup a little bit so that the shadow of my gnomon rod it falls in the center. Now, why did I do that? Well, well, you have already got a uh, well, you have got uh, some idea about how the experiment is going to run. So you know that I have to track this, uh, this shadow. So in order to make sure that the shadow actually stays inside the boundaries of this sheet of paper, I am going to place it in such a way that it stays like this, okay? After this point, I'm going to tell you how to mark the position of various shadows, right? I'm going to tell you that, but how do I do that? Um, so let's say this is my shadow right now. This is my shadow right now. In the shadow, there are two regions. I can see two regions. One is the lighter part of the shadow, lighter part of the shadow. And just below it, there's a darker part of the shadow. So I want to mark the darker part of the shadow. My point would be to mark the darker part of the shadow. And for example, in this one, I've got a lighter one over here, darker one over here. In that shadow, there's like a hole arc there's a, a half a circle over here so if there is half a circle over here how will i know where to mark my point i want to mark my point in the center of this shadow the darker part of the center of this shadow and how will i mark it instead of marking it with a line or anything like that instead of marking it with a line or anything like that i will mark it just using a dot no lines no circles nothing like that just a simple dot that will be used to mark the position of my shadow. Okay. So now it's about time that we get started with this thing. I will keep on announcing when we have to mark the shadow and you will do it with me. Okay. I'll tell you what to do next, but for now, our only attention, uh, like the only thing that we have to pay attention to is marking the shadows. So, um, the next shadow marking time, it's actually coming up quite quickly. So let's see. The next opportunity is at 12.14. We are at 12.11. I want you to stay prepared till then um, because with time, the shadow is going to move around on the sheet of paper and we are going to mark the different positions of the shadow. So the next marking is at 12.14. It's 12.12. Everyone, please get ready with your stuff. I hope you have done it up to an extent now. So while we are waiting for the shadow to arrive let me tell you what is the use of this thing okay this thing is the spirit level spirit level is there to make sure that my board is in the right position so uh in order to check that i will place it on top of my board after placing it wherever i'm going to do the experiment since i have placed it over here i can see that the bubble in the spirit level it is in the center if you're using the app again you just have to make sure that it is centered in case it is not centered, which means your board is skew in some way, then you have to make sure that um, that it is uh, it becomes centered. How will you do that? You can take a small piece of paper, maybe put it below the board somewhere in order to change the levels and make sure that the uh, bubble returns to the center again. OK, that is what you're supposed to do. Other than that, during the course of the experiment, once we start marking the shadows, you have to make sure that no matter what happens, your setup, it does not move around. From this point on, my setup is not going to move. If it moves, my, my whole thing is going to become invalidated because it won't be with the same standards. So I hope you're ready. We are almost reaching that point. It's 12.13. We are going to mark our first shadow at 12.14. So do you guys know when the local solar noon is going to be for your location? Um, if, if you're seeing this from a different place compared to Delhi, you may have a slightly different local solar noon in Delhi, the local solar noon is going to be at 12 19. So the timings that I'm going to use for marking my shadows is based off of that. We'll start off with larger time intervals, and then we are going to keep on reducing the time intervals. So my shadow has already moved a little bit. If you can see over here, the first marking was over here and it's time I've got the time for the first marking. 
so i have placed it over here the first mark i have already made it in the darker region of the shadow at the center of the arc if this is my whole arc i pointed i marked it at the center at the same time as soon as i make the mark i'm also going to write down the time related to it i'm going to write it down it's 1214 so that i know which mark corresponds to which point okay so 1214 is already marked let's let's see when the next marking is going to be the next marking is at 1217 that is after 3 minutes so we have some time now again since we were reaching up on the time i had to move a bit quickly but i want to show you what you were supposed to do with the plumb line that we created earlier on right so in order to use the plumb line what do you do it is there to ensure that your gnomon rod is straight okay we have to make sure that the gnomon rod is straight how do we do that we use the force of gravity in order to ensure that this thing is pointing downwards gravity since gravity always acts downward it is pulling it downwards and it is making sure that our line stays straight so you have to keep it straight and you have to place it right next to your gnomon once you place it right next to your gnomon and there is no wind or anything moving it around you have to keep it slightly stable and you have to compare whether your gnomon rod's shadow is straight in comparison to the plumb line because gravity will keep it straight so you will have a way to check whether your gnomon rod is straight or not so this is the use of the plumb line the other things they are going to come into the picture in some minutes but for now this is what we are supposed to do again we are reaching up on the next marking time right so we have created the first mark over here that compared to the point where we have placed our gnomon that is going to be the marking length of this particular shadow at 1214 as we move towards 1219 we are going to see a pattern start to emerge let's see what that pattern is in a few minutes but for now uh, we'll go for this in case you're getting stuck somewhere um i have my eyes on the chat box as well so you can let me know over there and i'll try to help you out Okay. In case you're getting stuck somewhere, please let me know in the chat box, and I'll help you out. We have to wait for the next marking time. We are again. We are getting quite close to it. The next marking time is at twelve eighteen. So twelve eighteen, it's coming up quite quickly. Okay, so first up, we've got twelve seventeen. Let's mark the shadow at twelve seventeen once. So I have made the mark over here. Please mark it at twelve seventeen. Twelve seventeen over here. Okay, that's twelve seventeen. that i know later on what's 1217 and we are reaching up on 1218 so now the variation is going to start dropping a little bit okay it has moved slightly and i've got 1218 over here next up is going to be the 1219 mark which is supposedly the shortest shadow for this day because it is um it is at the local noon for delhi so we are going to wait till 1219 and as soon as that happens we are going to quickly mark our shadow so that we have the shortest shadow for this day okay it's 1219 people please mark the shadow it's again it's going to be quite close so please mark the shadow 
I've got the 1219 mark right here with me. So you can see there's a variation in the movement of the shadow. We started off over here and in just the course of a few minutes, it has shifted so much. It has shifted so many marks. So I hope in the meantime, you have checked whether your gnomon rod is straight or not. The next marking time is going to be at 1220. So in the next minute, as we reach closer and closer to the solar noon, we, uh, we keep on decreasing the time and then we'll start increasing again. So we've reached solar noon already. This is 1219 local solar noon. We have marked it. Next up is 1220. So I, ho I hope you have checked it with the plumb line, whether your gnomon is straight or not. I hope you have checked with the spirit level, whether your board is straight or not. Okay, we are at the next point. We are at 12.20. We are at 12.20 and I have created the marking for 12.20 as well. Next marking time is going to be 12.21. Please everyone make sure that you have marked this far in your, uh, in your own, at your own end. To know the so local solar noon for your particular location, you can use a website known as timeanddate.com. So timeanddate.com, search for your particular city. And once you've done that, um, there will be a sunset related option, sunset and sunrise. So first it will say sun and moon. You'll click on that, then it will show sunset and sunrise. Click on that, go to today's date. And in that list, Okay, I'll explain the rest again. Now it's 1221. Let's mark the center of the shadow. 1221. Center mark. Okay, as I was explaining about the local solar noon, you can check it out on timeanddate.com, the search for your city. So for example, my city is New Delhi. I will search for that. And once I've done that, I will look for sun and moon. I'll click on that. There's a drop down menu there. Click on sunset and sunrise in the page that appears. Check for um, check for the meridian. So, okay, you'll see like a graph where the sun will be in the center at the highest point. Just look at that. Okay, and that should that should be enough. You will find the local solar noon time for your particular location. I also want you to know that you are not limited by this day. We are doing this on this day because it's it's just a nice opportunity to do it. And we know the declination of the sun. You can find out the declination of the sun for any day of the year. And this can be done practically any day of the year as, as long as you have access to the sun, obviously. But uh, if you don't have the sun, then, then you can't do it. If the sun is out there, you know the declination, you know your latitude, you should be able to do it. Okay, we should be coming up on the next marking time. Okay, uh, it is 12.24. So we are going to have the next marking at 12.24. So I hope you are ready for that. Right, any other questions? Or if you're getting stuck somewhere, please let me know, I'll help you out. In case you can't see the markings, I just need you to believe me that I have marked the sheet of paper, the sheet of paper in front of me at the time I told you to. Okay, you just have to trust me on that. I'll I'll try to adjust the video settings a little bit, uh, hoping that they they show it more. But you'll have to trust me on this one. So 12.24 is the next marking time. I've got my alarm set over here. That is how, how I know that it is time to mark it. So we are at 12.23. It is about time. Please, everyone, be ready. I hope you can see the places where I've marked. So for example, this was 12.14. You can already see the shadow move around a lot. It's already moved around a lot. So we are taking a number of measurements in order to show that it actually is the shortest shadow of this particular day. You'll, you'll see it practically on the sheet. And this also helps us ensure that we are not just blindly believing any numbers. We can see it for ourselves because, okay, it's already time. It's already time. It's 1224. Let's mark the shadow over here. I've just marked it using a single point. 
just a dot don't make big circles okay because later on you will run into trouble if you are using big circles okay that's 1224 now next up is 1227 next marking is going to be at 1227 again in case you are getting stuck somewhere please let me know in the chat box i have got my eyes on the chat box as well please ensure that you have done the previous steps you have checked whether your nomon is straight or not whether your board is leveled or not in case you've not done that the experiment can be invalidated it it won't turn out right okay and last time when i did this with um, some materials at my own home i found out that the the paper tends to fly off a lot okay so if that happens again it will be a big problem please don't let that happen please ensure that the paper stays stable the paper does not have to move if you are using a board to keep it stable make sure that all of it stays in place does not move around okay we are getting close to the next time slot which is going to be 1227 we are at 1225 so our final marking is going to be at 1230 we are going to mark till 1230 and then i'm going to explain what the next step is going to be so i want you to stay patient till then and i want you to ensure that you're doing the markings right it's supposed to be cold in delhi but today when i'm out in the sun it's not for some reason <laughs> so the next time to mark is going to be 1227 in case you are doing this with us it's going to be 1227 if you are in delhi if you are sharing my local solar noon time this is how you are supposed to mark it if your local solar noon time is slightly different then you can have slightly different time uh, periods when you are marking it um i generally go for for example let's say this uh, okay i'll explain how to decide the time margins after after we mark this particular uh, this particular point in time okay okay it's time it's 1227 let's mark it at 1227 i've taken the darkest part of the shadow center of the arc okay so as we are doing that i've got 3 minutes to tell you uh i've got 3 minutes to tell you how to decide the markings for this so uh, the marking times for this so let's say my so local solar noon was 1219 today so in order to ensure that i'm getting the right time periods i'll go 1 minute time intervals on both sides first so 12 12 19 so in comparison to that 12 18 12 17 on one side on the other side i've got 12 20 1221 then i increase the time periods a little bit so i'll go from 12 17 3 minutes back 12 14 then i'll move 5 minutes back like that so i'll keep on increasing the time periods a little bit till i go to like 12 so i've got three or four markings at least before my local solar noon three or four markings at least after my local solar noon okay again we are closing in on the next on the next time slot which is 12:30 so we are about to reach that mark please everyone stay ready uh stay alert next up is the marking at 12:30 If you have any questions or you're getting stuck somewhere, let me know in the chat box. I'll try to help you out. Okay. We're going to move on to the next stage quite soon, as the last marking is at twelve thirty. So I'll explain how to do the rest of the experiment, the calculations, the scientific part of this whole thing once we are there. If I squint a lot, please, please just assume that it's the sun getting in my eyes. Okay uh we are reaching 1230 quite quickly let's just stay prepared for that right it's 
it's 1229 people stay alert <clears throat> darkest part of the shadow central part, point of that shadow so i have got my pencil right here and i'm completely prepared to mark my shadow hope you're all doing the same thing with me because after this it's time for the calculations so where we'll explain how to get the circumference of the earth okay it's almost time right i've got my eyes on my chat box as well again if you feel like you're not able to get something please ask don't make a mistake because again your results will become invalidated okay it's time it's 12:30 time for our final marking over here and with that we are done with the marking phase of this particular experiment now even though we have done the marking please don't assume that it's time to move stuff around please stay patient how will you do it next uh, what what steps are you supposed to do next so we have done our markings what do we do next the next step is to take out our nomon it's to take out our nomon from this thing so i've removed the nomon and wait a minute stay patient in this place where you had your nomon use that to create a marking i know your nomon stand or nomon base might look a bit different but whatever you've used please ensure that you have created a mark at the exact location where the nomon was so i've used my pencil over here to make a marking and now i'm going to remove these pins that were keeping the nomon rod in place the nomon base in place and i've got my marking over here so the next step is to figure out the next step is to figure out the length of the shortest shadow how long is the shortest shadow so in order to do that i'll take my scale and i'll start joining the different lines over here okay so line number 1 goes like this next up i've got 12 17 so let's join up the position of the nomon rod with 12 17 the marking at 12 17 keep on doing it for all the time periods as we get closer to the local solar noon you'll find that they are getting closer and closer and because of that you'll have to stay even more vigilant okay you'll have to stay even more vigilant as we get closer to the solar noon because your lines are going to get very close to each other okay my bad in i think my, uh, your view was being blocked by my head i'll get that out of my way uh, out of your way so that you can actually see what's going on and let's let's join the next one and the next one okay so i hope now my markings are clear and everyone can trust me that i was actually doing the marking instead of just saying that i was marking the places okay so i have created these lines that are joining the different spots over here and i'm going to find out the length of the shortest shadow using these lines okay so first up let me figure out the length of the shortest shadow now generally when you do this you have like a measurement log sheet with you that has got all the um all the timings written and then you just enter the length of the different shadows here i'm just going to write them right next to the length of the shadow okay so over here the first shadow that i can see it's 26.3 cm okay first up is 26.3 cm next up we have reduced in length a little bit it's already 26.2 at 1217 okay let's move on let's let's go for the next one next one is at 26.1 somehow okay 26.1 then we are at the shortest shadow which is which is supposed to be at even lower that is 26 for me it's 26 cm for you it might be slightly different considering you have done it at a different point of time so that so that is how you're supposed to do it next up i'm going to find out the lengths have already started increasing again it's 26.2 at 12 2020 i move on to the next one it is at 26.3 again 
this one is 26.3 next up is 26.35 i guess it's slightly ahead of 26 next up is 26.35 it's also ahead of this one so with this i know that the length of my shortest shadow is going to be just 26 centimeters it's just 26 centimeters so what do we do with this data what is the use of this data so i've got the length of the shortest shadow you've already learned how to do this experiment in the first half of this webinar so let me just show you how to do it i know the length of the shortest shadow now so that is going to form the part one part of the triangle that i'm going to use for this okay to find out the sun angle the next step is to find the sun angle so the first thing that i'm going to do is mark a line that is 26 centimeters in length okay i'm going to mark a line that is 26 centimeters in length please ensure that this line is going to be straight okay don't let it be any other way this is 26 that's the length of my shortest shadow for this particular day next up i need the length of the gnomon rod and the gnomon base right this will help me form the other side of my triangle so what will i do i will i will place it over here so when i had used my gnomon it was like this it had two parts there was the gnomon rod and there was this thing the gnomon base so i'm going to measure how big is the gnomon base it is somewhere around 0.3 centimeters and this thing is 19 point 19 point three centimeters so when i join them together they become 19 point six centimeters in length so i'm going to use the 19 point six number in order to get the other side of my triangle so i'm going to place it like this then we are going to go till 19.6 okay there's 19.6 the next step is to join them together it's a slightly big triangle so i'll have to do a rough marking first i'm i'm doing a rough marking first so that i know where the line is supposed to be so that i can actually join them okay i think this should be able to get it done and it's the right line okay i've made my my triangle to figure out the length of the sun uh, or the value of the sun angle now now give me a second while i get my protractor and measure this sun angle okay uh, those of you who are a bit advanced you can also figure this out using um using your using your trigonometric skills so it's basically tan theta okay uh, you know the perpendicular you know the length of the base you can figure out um you can figure out the length or you can figure out the angle over here it is possible to do that using trigonometry protractor protractor we'll need a protractor for this and um, in the meantime let me just show you how to do this with tan theta so tan of any angle is this thing is perpendicular this is the base in this case and this is the perpendicular you can just use that while while i'm getting my protractor in that time you can you can use this if not it's it's perpendicular by base i'm not going to go into the depths of this because this is slightly advanced so it's up to you how you figure out how to do this uh, right but instead of this you can just place your protractor at this point and use it to measure this angle now i've made certain calculations beforehand so i have some idea what this angle is going to be even without doing this okay i've got my protractor over here and i'm going to figure out i'm going to figure out this angle so let's just find out what this angle is going to be and this angle is coming out somewhere around 51 degrees 
it's going to be somewhere close to 51 degrees i've i've just found that out and uh let's just use this value so first up i'm going to write i'm going to write the measure of the sun angle the first value that we need is the sun angle i hope you're able to see this uh the first thing that i'm going to need is the sun angle which is the angle that we measured right now this angle over here okay you can just measure this by placing the central part of your protractor at the point where the length of the uh, gnomon rod that line ends and placing it along here and that will tell you the gnomon uh, the sun angle so first up we've got the sun angle at 51 degrees it's slightly more than 51 degrees uh, so i've taken 51 over here that is my first part that is the first part the next thing that we need for this calculation is the distance between us that is delhi right now and um the latitude at which the sun is actually overhead so the sun is going to be overhead at the tropic of capricorn it's in the southern hemisphere that is why we've got winters going on in the northern hemisphere these days so i'm going to need that distance wherever it is somewhere in australia today they will have the sun overhead for them so how will we find out that distance we have already seen that formula distance is equal to well this is not general distance this is the distance between us and that place it is equal to our latitude minus the declination angle of the sun for that day into 111 right our latitude for that uh, for all days well the latitude of delhi for all days is going to be 28.5 so i'm going to put that number over here 28.5 minus the declination of the sun the declination so i hope you can see this better now uh we have got 28.5 as uh the latitude of delhi you will place your own latitude in this number uh right in place of this number you will have your own latitude don't use my latitude it's not necessary to use my latitude please use your own latitude and we've got the declination angle so declination angle for today is minus 23.5 minus because it's in the other hemisphere so as it goes below the equator we use negative values and multiplied by 1 1 and 1 so this will give us a number in kilometers 28.5 plus 23.5 into 1 1 1 i guess we'll have to use the calculator for this because i don't want to take up a lot of your time where i just calculate this so i'll just enter these numbers into my calculator let me quickly open it up there's my calculator so first up i'll do 28.5 plus 23.5 which comes out to be 52 so the first thing is going to be 52 into 11 so a 111 so i'll just multiply this by 111 it should um so 52 into 111 that will come out to be 5772 that is the distance in kilometers so i've got the number of i've got the number of kilometers over here i hope you can see it more clearly now i've got latitude minus declination i put it put in the values over here i've got my sun angle so now we have two parts of my whole equation how will i figure this out how will i figure this out uh the next thing that we have to do is use that ratio thing that we learned with the pizzas and the angles right so the next thing is dividing the sun angle by 360 so i'm going to divide the sun angle by 360 and i'm going to equate it with the distance between these two locations and the circumference of the earth these are the two things that i'm going to figure out so i know that this is the distance value this is the s value i'm going to put in the numbers first up is 51 divided by 360 which is equal to 5772 divided by c okay 5772 divided by c i'm going to send c to this side just 
mix, mix some stuff around, rearranging the terms. I'll get C is equal to 5772 into uh, 51 divide uh, into, not that, I made a minor error over here. Okay, so 360 divided by 51. Okay, again, I'm going to do this calculation using my calculator so that we reduce the amount of time being used over here. So 360, um, let's just do this, 5772 into 3, 360, which is equal to this number divided by 51. So I've got this value over here. Uh, just a moment, 5772 into 360, which is equal to this divided by 51, which gives me 40 and 763.5. This is the value that I'm getting over here. This is the value that I'm going getting over here. This is the circumference of the earth that I have calculated with my particular set of calculations. What do I do with this? Well, this is my calculation. And in my experiment, the amount of error that could get in is actually quite high. Why is it so? Because there are a number of places where I can make small mistakes. I may not measure this angle properly. I may have some mistakes in, uh, in stretching these lines, in drawing these lines, in connecting them properly. There may be a small mistake here or there. So what do I do? I compare it with the actual value that, um, that has been found using way more accurate experiments through other techniques as well. And I'll compare my value to this. So how will I do that? I will do that by finding out error percentage, error percentage. Okay. How do we find out error percentage? We find it out by experimental minus calculated. Okay and we divided by 100 okay so divided by calculated and that is going to give you a, a certain percentage okay so i'll put in this value 40 40763.5 which is what i have calculated i have to subtract the actual value so actual value is 40008 well you may find this number as slightly different in different places. Well, that's because the circumference of the earth is actually not a constant number. It depends on where you're measuring that circumference because the earth has got a bulge. So it's wider in the middle. It's, uh, it's smaller or less wide at the poles. So that is how it works. And in order to incorporate that, you can have this value ranging to a higher number as well. Okay. Divided by again, 40,008 again, right? So I'll, I'll get this value out of here. Let's find out what the result is going to be for this number. So it's basically for me, it's 763.5 minus eight. So that will give me 755.1. So for, so 755.5. Gives me divided by 40,008 gives me, this must also be multiplied by 100 in order to get proper numbers. So I will get somewhere around 0 0.018 and I'll need to multiply it by 100. So which will give me 1.8% error. Now this error is similar to the error that Eratosthenes has got in his original experiment when he did it 2300 years ago. So depending on the limitations of the equipment that we have got, okay, we, uh, this is well within the boundaries and especially for Eratosthenes who did this experiment 2300 years ago when it was barely known how, how big the earth is, whether it is curved or not. So they did not have any confirmation. He had to do this all in his imagination. It's, it's quite amazing. So using um using these measurements he ended up with an error of somewhere around two percent because he had got um the distance between himself and the place where the sun was overhead using just manual calculations not very accurate calculations and that led to minor errors in his calculation this is a good enough number 
so uh, in the comment section you can let us know what your results are going to be again i will specify that it's not a necessity to do this today in case you are, you are someone who's watching this webinar at a later date you can always choose to do it on any other day when you're free when you have access to this stuff just change the value of declination okay change the value of declination and you will find the distance between you and the sun on the day of the uh, on that particular day and that will change this whole calculation according to your needs okay so with that we are about to sign off i thank you all for joining us and please let us know your results in the comment section whenever you do it no force just do it whenever you can thank you all for joining us and i'll see you next time bye for now